The sight that Acharya Bhiksha saw outside the Viharat was shocking to him. Thousands of people gathered and stood. Their looks and their shouts showed that they were passionate. It is very easy to turn that obsession into hostility. Many had weapons like swords, shafts, clubs etc. in their hands. A few others had swords in their hands. It seems that they intended to raise the Vihara to the ground if the Bhikshas did not get in their way. It did not go without reason. From the time of Parintaka Emperor, there were frequent wars between Chola and Ila. Many Chola Nadu soldiers had died in the Sri Lankan war. Isn't it human nature to dislike something, then dislike others? The fury of the Chola people due to the Sri Lankan wars had led to a further return to Buddhism, which had been prevalent in India. It is enough if there is any small reason. The lay people were determined to take revenge on the remaining Buddhist viharas in Tamil Nadu and the Bhikkhus who lived in them. Acharya Bhikkhu felt that such an occasion had now arisen. Some malicious people have thus provoked the wrath of the laity. It is only through the mercy of Lord Buddha that one can get out of this misery. When they saw the Acharya Bhikshu, the cheering of the crowd was greater than before. Words like Give me Pani's Selvara. Otherwise we will raise the Viharam to the ground were heard like sea chants from thousands of hateful voices. At the same time, Acharya Bhikshu noticed that the sea was also increasing in ferocity. What the young Bhikshu said was true. A gale of immeasurable speed. Coming towards the beach. The storm is going to hit the shore very soon. Pikshu was worried that even if he survived the danger posed by these people, the Viharam would survive the storm. By this time the young Pikshu had signalled with his hand to stir up some noise in the crowd of angry people. Great people! I have brought our leader, be at ease. Can't you all enter this Viharat at once? Name one or two of you. Let them enter the Viharat and search. You must come back and accept what they say. Is this agreeable to you? Who is coming with me into the Viharat? He asked. Hundreds of people in the crowd shouted I'm coming I'm coming. The young Piksha took up the hand again and said, What's the use of all clamoring together? Pick someone. I suggest. Tell me if any of you have seen the Selvar of Pawnee lately, within the last month. I'm going to call such a person. It will be convenient to recognize the prince. Said. Standing at the forefront of the crowd, Rakamal shouted, We have seen it. The young Pikshu looked at the boat and said, Father. Is she right? He asked. Murugayan said, Swami. What she is saying is not true. She has not seen the prince recently. It is true that I saw Pani's son-in-law in Eland within a month of my visit. I fell at his feet and apologized for the wrong I did to him unknowingly. At that time, he smiled at me with kindness, and it is as if it happened yesterday in my mind. I can easily recognize him. Then you are the one who deserves this job. There is nothing wrong with what your wife says. She thinks that what you saw is what she saw. Even now, if you look inside the monastery and come back, she will agree. Your wife should know that girls are not allowed in Buddhist temples where pictures do penance. Therefore, you come here," said the young Pikshu. Then he went down the steps of the front door of the Vihara and took one of Murugaya's arms and climbed the steps again. Looking at the people, he said, This boatman Murugayan has seen the prince recently. I am going to take him inside. He will search the entire Vihara and come back and tell you. Is this acceptable to all of you? said. A nod of assent did not come so swiftly from the crowd. Some murmured assent. Others whispered to one another, Is there anything wrong with this? Their secretive voices rivaled the roar of the sea. The young Piksha noticed this and said in a loud voice, Great people! Here is our Acharya. If you have anything to ask, ask him. In the meantime, I will take this man and show him around the Vihara. Seeing Acharya Piksha resplendent with a majestic appearance and a meek face, the people felt a little reverent. No one dared to ask him any more preachy questions. Acharya Bhiksha watched the crowd for some time. Then, he looked at the distant sea behind them. 
Can we be complicit in harming such a noble prince in any way? Nothing should happen to the prince. We were praying that the news about him was false. There are reasons why we are dearer to Pani Selva than to all of you. At this moment someone in the crowd interrupted and said, that is why we are afraid. We are afraid that your love will be so great that you will shave the head of our prince and make him a picture by giving him saffron cloth. He said. Many of the people standing around him heard this and laughed out loud. Acharya Piksha somehow got some kind of obsession at that time. On this occasion he realized that there was only one sure way to clear the doubts of the people. He immediately vowed in the following languages what appeared in his heart without thinking before and after. I will not ask Prince Arulmas Hivarmar, the son of the emperor and the rich man of Pony, to convert to Buddhism. Even if he offers himself, I will not accept it. I will never do the deed of shaving his head and offering saffron cloth to Gamakan, who is born to rule the world and who has attracted your love. Buddha Kakami Dharma Kakami Sangam Kakami The hearts of all the people gathered there underwent a great change when they heard these words spoken by the emotional Dathumbak with thunderous majesty. Many had tears in their eyes. There was silence for a while. Acharya Piksha continued it is natural that all of you should be so worried about the Chola people's favorite prince. Your worries about Pani's Selvaram may be over now. From now on, worry less about your family, home and door. Great people. Until then, we are on this side. An unheard of storm seems to be closing in on us. Behold, look behind you. People looked back. As the Pikshu had told them, they saw the most amazing sight they had ever seen in their lives. Not only a wonderful sight, but a terrifying one. The sea was raging and rising and touching the black waves rising high in the sky. The black-colored water did not stop where the mountain stood. It was moving up and down. If the mountain comes up to where the people are standing, they are not the only ones. Sudamani Vihara itself seems doomed to sink. The people stood in awe at this sight, and Acharya Bhikshu again said, Look at Nagaipatanam, where you all live. He said that. The town of Nagaipatanam was situated a little to the north of Sudamani Viharam. It was spread far and wide. Along the coast were trade roads, customs buildings, etc. Beyond them the houses where the people lived were spread over a distance of about half an ear in the east-west and south-north directions. At that time the sea had begun to overflow the place where the trade roads and toll booths were and to enter the streets of Patanam as well. The boats and canoes in the sea were swaying this way and that as if they were suspended somewhere in the sky, giving a view on the top of the water mountains. The masts of the boats were swaying to a hundred degrees. Great people! We have heard that once upon a time Kavarai Padanam belonged to the sea. May Lord Buddha save us from such an accident. But go back at once and try to save your children and your belongings as much as possible. Acharya Piksha shouted in a hoarse voice. Hearing this, the crowd rushed like a wave of the sea and moved towards the city. The front runners started running. Those who stood behind chased them. At first they moved in groups. Then they scattered in all directions. Within a few minutes, the place where the huge crowd was standing just ahead showed an empty scene. Padakati Murugayan's wife Rakamal stood where she stood and shouted, My husband! My husband! She shouted. Mother! Your husband will not be in any danger. He will return safely. Save yourself! Said Pikshu. No, no. Leaving my husband, how can I go? I am coming into the temple, said Rakamal. No, mother! No! No, girls are not allowed to enter the Viharat where the Buddhist ascetics live. Don't you know? Said Pikshu. At this time, a man who was staying behind in the huge crowd of people, instead of running, approached Rakamal. He said something in her ear. He grabbed her hand and pulled her hard. She started dating him reluctantly. Ah, who is this man? What is the relation between him and this woman? Thinking that, Acharya Bhikshu entered the Viharat. He approached the place where Bonnie's Selvar was. 
Murugayan was listening with devotion to the prince saying that he had received all the miracles by now. Muruga. You must come back tonight and take me in a boat to Anamangalam, said the prince. Acharya Bhiksha said, Prince. You don't have to wait till night. The crowd has dispersed. You can leave now. Then he narrated in a few words what happened outside. Swami. The people have dispersed. Why should I go? Said the prince. What's certain is that they won't come back. And didn't you just say that you would fulfill our vow as Pikhas? May it be fulfilled. Said Pikshu. The truth was that the raging sea would completely engulf the Sudamani Viharam in no time. So he wanted to expel the prince as soon as possible. Anamangalam was a short distance east of the coast. Because of this, the raging sea cannot reach that far. Even if reached, the largest Chola mansion there would not sink. The prince accepted Piksha's opinion. Immediately the order was given to bring the boat. Meanwhile, Looking at the Buddhist pictures gathered there, Acharya Bhiksha said, We belong to Lord Buddha, who is the form of compassion. Now the people of Nagapatanam have faced a great trial. I saw the sea raging and rushing into the city. The roofs of the houses are flying away due to the speed of the storm. Trees are falling and falling. Among the people living in Nagapatanam and the surrounding areas are the elderly. Children and many people are suffering without knowing the way to escape. All of you go around and help those who are suffering in front of your eyes. Take care of the children and the elderly first. Save as many people as you can from Samadra Rajan's wrath. I am an old man. Hearing this, the pictures left the place. The boat arrived at the canal. The prince saluted and bade farewell to the Acharya Pikshu and boarded it. Murugayan also got on board and started pushing the boat. Pikshu stood looking at the boat till it disappeared from sight. A rare torch was shining around his face.